Alright, so welcome back everybody. In this little lecture here, I want to talk to you a little bit more in depth about lights and how lighting can affect your photography. We have two primary elements whenever we're dealing with light. We normally deal with natural and artificial, as you'll see in the readings. One of the trickiest parts is determining which you want to use, but also as well what fits your subject or what you are trying to do as far as the photograph is concerned. Sometimes, yes, you can get around, you know, for instance, natural light, which can be a real bear to work with and just use artificial lights. However, sometimes, you know, especially if you're outdoors, uh, you may sit there and you're stuck with natural light. A lot of people, I think, also have a misconception that I can fix the light and the light direction and the intensity of the lights whenever I take it into a software program like GIMP or Photoshop. I'm sure you've all seen this uh, in one form or another where you've looked at a photograph or maybe you've looked at a video where the highlights didn't look right to your eyes. You felt like something was off or looked a little fake. Lights and replicants of lights is, are really, really difficult to pull off. So I wanted to talk a little bit about your options. And honestly, you don't need to spend thousands upon thousands of dollars to get, you know, artificial lights. I mean, even just using something like a lamp or, you know, even, you know, something more like a flashlight or overhead lights, you can get some neat effects. So one of the things I encourage you, and you're going to have the opportunity to um, in some of your exercises, is trying both indoor and outdoor lighting options. Now, one thing that folks don't realize with things like natural light is just because we call it natural light, you know, immediately we think outdoors. I mean, and that's really what natural light is in the whole grand scheme of things. It is sunlight. Um, one thing a lot of folks forget about, though, whenever they're working as far as creating content is they forget that lighting can also happen inside an environment here. So you see how open these windowed areas are, and you can actually see how even, you know, the light coming through over here is kind of, because it's hitting that white, it's actually kind of blowing out that hallway there. So that's one of the biggest misconceptions that people don't think about. Think about your own houses, your own living environments, where, you know, what windows do you have and how does the light come into that space? Those are all things that, you know, we can kind of, consider there whenever we're going through and thinking about sunlight. So just because you're using sunlight doesn't mean you have to be outdoors. Now this is another issue that, you know, along with Photoshop and uh, GIMP, uh, this is where kind of I think that misconception comes into play whereby we can alter photographs, that we can fake natural light. I've rarely have ever seen this work out as far as design goes. Um, normally it looks fake. So that's one of the drawbacks of working with natural light is really you are relying strictly on that moment in time as far as the lighting is concerned. So, and it can be a real pain as far as working with sunlight and natural light. For instance, you know, some things you might want to consider is the weather. You may have everything lined up, you know, as far as your subject, as far as your model, etc. You're ready to go to location and it's overcast or it starts raining. What do you do? If you were looking for a shot like this down here, you're going to have a bad time and probably end up rescheduling. Now, that's one of the pros, though, you know, if you did something like studios instead. However, you kind of lose this natural feel to it. So weather can be a huge issue whenever you're working with natural lighting. Likewise, as too, um, you know, I'm going to put this in quotes here. You kind of get one shot at it. 
there is a phrase as far as really once that moment passes, you're never going to get that same lighting effect again. Um, there are some out there that will argue that, hey, uh, I can tell the difference. Some might not be able to, but also do other elements change. For instance, um, you know, if you're working with a model, the makeup may not be applied the same way. It may look different in the next day's light or heaven forbid, again, we go back to that weather issue where, you know, the day is overcast. Now you've lost another day of shooting. These are all issues that you can run into while you are trying to work with natural lighting. So when you're working with natural lighting, we actually have kind of three elements here. And first off is the temperature of the light. Really, it is difficult to get a pure white light. Um, if you ever look at lamps, for instance, uh, a lot of them are not that bright pure white uh, what we actually do is we measure the temperature of light types in kelvins now to be clear though we don't walk around saying that i'm going to shoot at xyz kelvins no uh, we use it as a reference as far as the type of lighting that we're working with and if anything one thing that can happen here is it kind of gives away when you're shooting so if you want kind of that brighter light closer to white, you're going to be doing daytime, midday, you know, I'd almost say between, you know, 10 to maybe one o'clock as far as, you know, shooting. Now the warm though, this is kind of what we like to call the golden hour. And you see so many photographs like this. This is depending on the time of year, this is your sunset scenes. So you're probably looking at, you know, five, to 7 p.m. as far as getting that golden element there. And this is where also, yes, you get the gorgeous rainbows as far as your gradient is concerned, so on and so forth. However, we also have a blue light, which is really, I would say, like 8 p.m. plus as far as on is concerned. This is your night shots. These are probably I would argue the trickiest because of the fact that even though you technically have no light, you still technically have light. It's just very minimal. And this is why when you're doing evening types of shots, normally, uh, you know, this is where you start to get into you need some type of tools for instance this is where tripods uh really become required this isn't an optional thing because of the fact that you have to have you know you have to open the aperture of the camera so wide and you have to have it pretty much you're trying to set up your camera to absorb as much light as possible which can mean a long exposure. Nobody can hold still that long. If you've tried to shoot at night, you'll notice uh, your hand shakes, even just breathing throws that off. So what we have to do is, that's where the tripod comes into play, is it will actually help as far as that exposure. So for instance, you know, night shots, Yes, you have the lighting from the city coming in. However, it's not a lot. So yeah, you're going to be sitting there having to probably put it on a tripod. I've seen some photographers even go so far as to have <clears throat> clickers uh, attached to their cameras so that they're not even having the shaking of having to hit the shutter button so that that way then the camera just opens, absorbs light and closes. If you don't have a tripod, uh, these are some of my suggestions. Try to lean against something. Or even if you can, you know, steady the camera, like on a wall or something. Uh, when you go to actually take the photo,
This isn't like a huge deep breath or anything, but hold your breath. Because yes, even breathing, you're shaking the camera. This is only if you have like no access to a tripod. Um, even for those of you that, you know, you may be using a phone, you can get a tripod off of Amazon for like $15, $20 that will hold the camera in place for you. Uh, I've even seen tripods now for phones that will double as, you know, selfie sticks, etc. You want it more for the tripod element. So that way then you can position, you're not trying to hold the camera and you can get that clear shot as far as working in blue or evening lights. And really who doesn't love a good nightscape or night scene as far as whenever you're taking photos. It's almost like a cornerstone or a rite of passage as far as photography goes. So I wanted to show you a demo here as far as bright light. You know, midday here, you can see as far as the direction of the sun, uh, you know, how it's hitting as far as the blue water, as far as the ducks are concerned here, kind of high in the sky, shorter shadows, pretty standard here as far as the bright. Probably also too, as you can see, clear day, the easiest of the natural lights to work with. Uh, the only thing to be cautious of is if the bright light, and we'll get into this with directional lighting, is shining directly onto uh, your model. You're going to have them squinting. You're also going to get weird shadow effects. So uh, while it's probably the easiest to work with because you don't have to do a lot, um, you want to be aware of the situation and the surroundings as far as how everything else going into that shot looks. Lastly, yes, the golden hour. We all know it. We all love it. Uh, it's probably the prettiest. It kind of, you know, is nature's art, artwork where, yes, it is just that. We work with the golden elements. can be a little bit tricky as far as getting kind of some front lighting going so that it doesn't look um, as far as blown out is concerned. Like you can kind of see it here on the ship area, if I wanted more balanced light, I'd probably be using a flash at this point to try to light this backside. Also too, as you can see with the birds in the skies, this is kind of standard uh, whenever you're starting to get into the warm element here, whereby yes, you kind of get that shadowed uh, backlit look as far as the lighting goes so just be aware of that but yes this is always you know big crowd pleaser as far as lighting is concerned with that in mind be careful using it because yes everybody loves to use it everybody loves that you know backlit cutout look because you get nature's gradient going on behind it so with that we also talk about intensity and I kind of showed that there you can see that actually between here the bright and the warm light you can see a difference in the intensity of the lighting and that's all it is how intense is the sunlight think about in terms of a bright blue clear day versus uh, an overcast day again this is something that very much planning and considering the intensity going back to the weather can help as far as preparing for your shoot. And just so that you're aware of it, yes, uh, this is normally measured in what are called looks. Uh, but again, we don't really go around quoting measurements. If anything, though, being aware of it knows that, you know, the higher the looks, uh, the more likely you are going to have a, you know, very intense brightness to the environment lower you're probably dealing with more shadows or even overcast to the point that you're losing those shadows the direction of the sun or your natural light again i mentioned earlier here in the lecture that time is not your friend at all uh, the longer you take to shoot your scene so for example if this is your subject here and you start shooting at you know 10 you know, the longer you go, the more that sun is going to move, you know, throughout the day here. So that means the angle on your subject is going to change. Now, having said that, that might be something that you want. It may be an all day shoot where you are trying to get, you know, bright golden hour and night as far as the shoot is concerned. And that, in that case, it's working completely for you. 
However, if you're looking for one shot, the angles and shadows continually changing can uh, kind of hurt you there. And as I mentioned down here at the bottom, this is another misconception. I mean, graphical programs can't really fix this. Yes, you have things like dodge and burn tools. It's still going to be noticeable. I've never really seen people utilize graphical tools where they were able to kind of fake out the direction of the lighting. Now, however, whenever you think about this, being able to understand and anticipate shadows for directions, this can help with choosing the setup. For instance, you know, if the light is going to be coming directly at the person or your subject or whatever, you know, watch for some funky shadows. And we've all kind of seen this, you know, that super sharp cut against the nose uh, or uh, you know, the person squinting because the sun's shooting directly onto their eyes. If, you know, get a little bit as far as like if you're working with a model, get them into the shade a little bit. Or if you absolutely want them in sun, I mean, some sort of face covering like a hat or something just so that they're not squinting for hours on end can be a good use or you know maybe uh, them holding up a sheet or you even outside of the shot putting up some short, sort of sheet so that they have some shading but also too you don't get these weird shadows happening from the angle in time that you're actually shooting. So talking about this this is um, I also want to get into kind of the artificial elements here but also even with directional lighting with some planning we actually have several main types here. So, and you've probably seen these over and over. You've got the front light, which is our standard, you know, directly face on. You've got the backlit where either you have the shadowed uh, cutout or you kind of have like the halo effect. If you have a little bit of front light bringing up the front of the person, the side light, which can be really uh, kind of you know, intense where it's only shining on one side of the face and you kind of have that gradient going off into the shadow. And then you have overhead lights, which again are the lights shining down kind of from directly above your subject or your item. And then upward light. Um, upward light is actually really a tough one to work with. Uh, you get funky shadows again. Uh, I mentioned here, you know, spooky season. If you ever remember or saw movies where, you know, people are sitting around the campfire and then they hold the flashlight up under their chin, that's technically upward light. And, you know, you get those weird shadows. It doesn't look right. However, um, just to grab some examples here for everybody uh, of some of the effects here, what I actually was really intrigued by is the idea of you have both the downward but also you have the upward as well as far as this photograph is concerned and I've seen this being for some reason there's a big movement in photography about taking you know underwater shots uh, with models and stuff um, as far as giving that kind of extraterrestrial feeling to the photograph but here you kind of have you know the front and your standard front here and then up here this is the side where you have the light coming in but then you can see kind of where it starts to fade you know right here on the center which is really what you're kind of going for the nose on the human figure here is fantastic for that however you can see they had enough light that you can still make out the eye the eyebrow things along those lines so these are just some examples and just because, you know, we don't really, you know, unless we're really setting up a scene kind of like this upper photo here and this photo over here on the right hand side, you're not really, it's not like I must find a situation where it is front lit. Um, sometimes, especially when you're working with nature, like with the giraffe here, sometimes you just get lucky. Uh, you know, you're taking hundreds and hundreds of photographs and hey, guess what? You got super lucky. And I just wanted to point out as far as artificial lights, those are like your lamps, overheads, etc. Um, as far as lights that are created, you know, by us. They are just as they sound, 
we create and control the environment we control the lights uh yes as you can see right on the right side there normally yes in a studio you're talking about hundreds if not thousands of dollars going into lighting uh you know being able to soften lights reflectors the works as far as getting that perfect lighting scenario however within your own homes you can also do directional or artificial lighting and do directional if you got a lamp take the lampshade off you know or you know put up a blanket uh, all these sorts of things you can do the same thing with artificial lighting and not have to shell out thousands of dollars just to get uh, you know a set scenario as far as your lighting goes so hopefully this kind of helps as far as breaking down as far as your readings go but also too to give you kind of a point of reference on the importance of lighting you can really use it to your advantage if you are purposely thinking about it so yes you have the composition am i using rule of thirds etc but you know lighting can really also add to an overall shot as far as making it more impactful or unfortunately also pulling away and kind of showing as far as you know making the photo look a little bit blown out or you know making the model or the subject uh, look washed out etc so it's really your call on how you use the lighting just remember you want to think about the direction the intensity and the color of your lighting whenever you're preparing for your shoots.